Hello everybody and welcome to the first ever Crazy Cuban playthrough. Uh, this is going to be a playthrough of Ancestors, the Humankind Odyssey. And uh, you might not know this about me, but I am actually an anthropologist. I studied anthropology in college and I have a master's in medieval archaeology. And I've always been interested in the human past. Uh, recently, I've gotten interested in primatology and, uh, you know, physical anthropology, biological anthropology. Um, and this game was in a great part one of the reasons why I got interested in that subject. Uh, I started reading, you know, books about it. It started with Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind by Yuval Noah's Harari. And then I moved on to Grooming, Gossip, and the Evolution of Language by Robin Dunbar. And finally, I read Chimpanzee Politics, Power and Sex Among Apes by Franz De Waal. And uh, these books have been really amazing. Uh, and they've definitely expanded my love for this game just because of a deeper understanding of chimpanzee behavior and how it pertains to human behavior, early human, early hominid behavior. Um, so, yeah, like I said, I'm pretty excited about this this is the first time that i've done a playthrough uh that i've recorded a playthrough i've played the game several times as you will be able to see i won't be uh wasting a lot of time doing you know trying to find out how to do stuff i know how to do pretty much everything in the game Now we have fish in space. I do love the opening to this game. It's 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 really amazing, and it like definitely draws you into the you know precarious you know lifestyle that our early ancestors lived in. You know the fact that. At any turn, there were predators and falls and all sorts of dangers in the jungle. Obviously, in the game, some of these dangers are overblown. You know, it's like a zoo in there. But uh, other times, it's pretty spot on. This is my favorite. I don't know how often that would have happened. I know for a fact Jaguars do kill uh, cro caimans and crocodiles in South America. And, you know, the Torbjörn Nansson crocodile was about 25 feet long. And uh, Ma Makirotis was about 6 feet long. 500 pounds but it could have been if it was a small crocodile my curators could have taken it out This is an awesome scene right here. Although the name Battler Eagle, it's kind of complicated because, you know, they're, they're Battler Eagles now and they have about a six foot wingspan. They are about 22 to 28 inches long. And uh, although they might predate on like young chimps, they don't, they're not big enough to predate on 
and grown chimpanzees. So I wonder if that was, you know, some freedom that the game developers took in creating the eagle or if they researched I haven't researched uh, early megafauna like that not for birds so I don't know if you know the battler eagles were far larger at a specific moment in time so this right here this is you know perfect representation of like ape movement you know grasping with four limbs and hind limbs grasping the trees and walking on all fours just basically traversing the jungle uh, chimps are tricky because they they're not only stick to the to the tree branches um, they'll go to the tree branches to defend themselves to like escape from predators and things like that but they will forage on the forest floor and you know they they're both on the on the jungle floor and on the trees so So yeah, that uh, perfect representation of like a baby chimp hanging on to a parent. And uh, chimp society is uh, made up of, uh, it's called fission fusion. Their groups are very dynamic. You'll have like males that, you know, come in and like join a group or like leave a group depending on the season and sometimes they'll band together to hunt uh, sometimes different groups will band together to forage but then they'll separate and then you know when they go to sleep uh, there's specific groups of like chimps that sleep together It's it's interesting, you know, to think, I mean, the does a chimp know enough to hide like the little like the little ape did there in the hole? Does a chimp know enough to hide from predators, from like dangers? And I, I think they do, I believe they do. Um, as you saw on in the intro it said that it was Africa ten million years ago and there's uh there's been studies that that basically push back the separation of humans from chimps back to about 8 million to 10 million years ago. When we look at the genetics part of it, uh, the genetics, the molecular information tells us that there was a divergence at 10 to 8 million years ago and then now there's been a new study by uh, David Begun of the University of Toronto in Canada this study came out in 2015 so it's not super new but it basically they looked at Dryopithecus again and they saw they, def they decided they defined that Dryopithecus was a gorilla it wasn't an earlier ape so that pushes the separation of gorillas from chimps and humans and the separation of humans from chimps it pushes it back so that's a really interesting study I'm going to link all of the information that I gathered for this uh, video I'll link it on the description um, yeah So that's something that's really interesting in this game. Well, you see where you see like all the different, you know, ape 
types. You see Sahel Anthropus, Chadensis, Ororin. You see like all the different like stages of evolution. But technically right now, what you're looking at right now, 10 million years ago, this is the beginning of the separation between chimps and the hominins that would become us humans. Uh, obviously, there was uh, there was like interbreeding that went on after that. So there is like it's kind of murky. It's always hard to tell when the split actually happened. That's something that's difficult for anthropologists to to suss out. And also, you know, this part like. Would a chimp or would a early hominin be interested in a meteorite that fell from the sky as a as a point of interest? That's I mean I I don't think so. I I think they would have been scared. They would have run, but they wouldn't necessarily have like searched it out and tried to like go to it. But, you know, that's one of those liberties that the game creators take that make the game better as a game while still keeping the main focus of, like, you know, evolution and early, early human history, you know, prehistory. I love the, I love the lush the lush vegetation i mean it draws you in it makes you really feel like you're in africa 10 million years ago so this is as you probably know uh, if you don't know this is the main hub where you unlock your abilities those are neurons that you unlock and the way to unlock them is you have to have a, a baby nearby so you have to have one on you or on a on an ape nearby you and as you do things in the game as you interact in the game you unlock uh, neuronal energy and you can use that energy to unlock abilities uh, so yeah, that's basically your your tech tree right there. As you can see, when I'm walking on water, I walk on on two legs. So you see the beginning of bipedalism. You know, and this is something that chimps do. I mean, chimps don't really like water they they don't know how to swim they drown so they'll stay away from like really deep water but when it comes to like creeks or like rivers that they need to cross they'll they'll go on like their hind legs and walk across it So yeah, I've played the game before, so this is not going to be like uh, a first playthrough of like discovering everything. I, I pretty much know everything that I'm doing. Like, you know, before you eat food, you have to inspect it. That's something that's very like real. That's, that's you know, very accurate, you know before you eat any kind of food you want to make sure that there's no like dirt on it there's it's not you know green still it's not rotten that's something that we do nowadays that's something that early hominins did that's something that chimpanzees do you have to look at it so that's and it gives you neuronal energy every time that you look at that that piece of fruit As you can see, I'm walking on water. So 
so yeah the game really drops you in as if you're this like specific hominin and you don't know what you're doing you don't know anything about how to survive you don't know how to drink water you don't know how to eat and you have to learn all of these things by doing them um the game has been you know a lot of people have said that the game is really hard you know it doesn't it definitely doesn't help you out but i think that's something that the creators wanted to do on purpose um they wanted to create an experience that that was difficult but also was rewarding when you find out how to do something when you like learn how to do a specific skill you know you feel rewarded you feel like you achieve something so as you can see as you saw there on the sleep spot you can enter your evolution stage uh, and you can uh, you can assign your neurons so I'm, I'm missing one still I'm missing the the senses neuron and I'm about to I'm about to find out I'm trying some mushrooms here So yeah, you know, I'm not going to talk necessarily too much about gameplay in the sense of like how the game plays because, you know, there's there's a ton of other videos out there that do a really good job of like how the gameplay is supposed to be played and everything like that. My main focus is, you know, the interaction of like hominins with each other. There it is. I got the I got the senses neuron right there. So I had to switch from smelling to hearing and then that that unlocked the neuron. So as you can see I have all of the neurons unlocked now. So these are the the basic like the first neurons that you unlock and then they let you unlock the the next ones. But it's nighttime. As you can see, the moon on top on the top of the screen, there's a sun and a moon, and when the moon comes out, it's nighttime. So I'm sleeping right now, and you can dream in the game. And uh, obviously, this is again another liberty that the creators took. We we don't really know. I mean, we know that that dogs can dream. We know that chimps can dream. We don't know necessarily what kind of images or sounds or what they experience when they dream so it's hard to tell if you know they would see things like that but it's kind of cool that they give you little hints of what you can do with like hunting or like animals that you can see with the dream sequences that that's pretty cool so yeah like right now i'm basically just looking at everything that i can just finding all the branches finding all the collectibles all the different interactable items this is something that 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 chimps do now they don't necessarily do it that way that the hominin did it but uh they do strip branches They'll take a branch and they'll strip like smaller branches off of it and they'll use it as a spear. Uh, they'll spear uh, this, they'll spear this small like uh, prosimian and like monkeys like in trees. Uh, there's a really good YouTube video on it. Um, I might link it of the chimps hunting with spears. So again, this is something that, you know, the creators took a liberty with. I don't know necessarily that 10 million years ago, we had, you know, we there's no, there's no indication in the fossil record that early hominins 10 million years ago were working stone tools together. 
So this is one of those parts in the game where I, w I would have liked to see a slower progression in your capabilities. It would have been nice to be more of a chimp like a and you know scare enemies with your like numbers with your groups of people and you know you can bite chimps have uh, wicked wicked uh canines and they can give pretty pretty strong bites they also use sticks to hit leopards they'll use sticks to like hit leopards and scare them away so it would have been nice to see a progression of like using sticks scaring animals with your with your uh you know with your tribe and then slowly getting the tools because by the time you get to lucy by the time you get to australopithecus afarensis we do have more of a grasp of like what kind of tools they used but uh this early on this is all it's it's for the game it's it's for the gameplay but it's all conjecture i mean it's not we don't really know Another thing that uh, that I found interesting but kind of bothered me a little bit about the game is that you know you can you can eat everything but like starting out certain things make you sick like if you eat meat like fish or if you hunt a, a wild boar like you know it makes you sick but uh, Technically speaking, you know, chimps are omnivorous. They they eat they eat other monkeys. They hunt monkeys. They'll they'll eat insects. They'll eat you know fish if they find it. They they're they're pretty omnivorous. They you know it would have been nice to to get more of that in the game earlier on. Uh, I definitely like that it's an unlockable that's that's definitely nice but it would have been it's interesting to see how they went about it how you have to unlock it but you know, we got some coconuts i'm not really explaining like what i'm doing in the game you can see it for yourself if you need any help any hints with the game you know like you can shake coconut trees and make them fall you can strip you can strip pretty much anything if you're like the whole point of the game is to explore and to try new things so you know if you find something put it on your left hand and try to interact with it so like right now I've got a coconut and I'm just finding you know I'm just like trying to find everything that I can interact with here in camp before setting out so you'll see me you'll see me use tools twice usually you want to use tools twice or five times uh, just to get the the evolutionary feet and those evolutionary feats are gonna help you evolve faster into the the next stages of evolution. But yeah, overall the game the game is really nice. I mean, I I've played it like I said. I, several times i've i've loved it every single time and uh just the visuals of it it's just so immersive and so see this is another thing you can strip horsetail 
and you can actually like create like a a paste with it and you can apply it you can apply it to your body to prevent like uh i believe bleeding so let's talk now a little bit about you know how chimps live in the wild just because you know since this early hominin is so close to chimps this is like the best representation that we have for what early hominins would have been like so Jane Goodall says that in the wild chimps construct their nests in in like a tree so she says and I'm quoting her the construction of a nest I found is simple and takes only a couple of minutes. After choosing a suitable foundation, such a horizontal fork with several branches growing out. The chimpanzee stands and this on this and bends down a number of branches from each side so that the leafy ends rest across the foundation. He holds them in place. So what I'm trying to say with that is that chimps mainly make their sleeping their nest their sleeping beds up in the trees uh, they usually don't don't sleep on the ground as we see here in the in the video game just because they don't uh, you know they're a lot safer up in the trees there's less predators uh, leopards can't get to them as easily there's there's safety in the trees there's comfort in the trees so another thing that i wanted to talk about is how how chimps um i guess think about death or visualize death and uh i was reading an article on it and it's really good it's called Chimpanzees and Death uh, by James Anderson and basically he goes through the different types of deaths that chimps experience in the wild and how different individuals interact with those deaths whether it be from a predator whether it be from a fall so that's something that I that I didn't know like chimps fall a lot and you know like the apparently let's see so fatal falls represent 10 percent of the sample in a study of kibali corpses of kibali chimpanzee corpses gombi adults were most likely to fall during fights so when the chimps are fighting or when the chimps are you know jumping from tree to tree they can very much like fall to their deaths uh in fact the Alistair, the astrolopithecine can't say that word the astrolopithecine lucy uh the fractures on their, on her skeleton they've been argued that they indicate death from a fall although you know there's always when you have an argument like that there's always a counter argument that it could be something else but, you know, that just elucidates that it's a possibility that Lucy fell to her death and that falls, just like in this game, are very much a, a, a health hazard. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so, in the article, in the article... Anderson talks about the Gombe, the Gombe chimpanzee's reactions to the sudden death of an adult male who fell out of a tree. And there was a frenzy of loud vocalizations and displays, mutual embracing, as well as, uh, you know, checking up on the corpse, you know, smelling the corpse and, and, and checking on it. So... 
when you live in a in a troop, when you live in a society, in a, in a when you as a species put so much stock, so much pressure, or when you put so much like time and effort into living socially as a society, as a group of like individuals, be it chimps or hominins or humans. You know, it affects you. The the death of a loved one, the death of a of a friend affects you. So that that definitely was a an interesting point for me to like look at while looking at this game. Just the the amount of deaths from falling being ten percent and the reaction of the chimpanzees to to fall in. There you can see there's a a chimp uh, there's a hominin eating something from a stick. So it doesn't give you like a clear picture of what it is that you're supposed to do but it does give you some indication of uh, you know some hints of what you could be doing in the game so I would also like to talk now about you know grooming and uh, Robin Dunbar does a great job in his book grooming gossip and the evolution of language the book is from 1996 so it's not the most current of like theories but it is from the modern era and uh i think it's really interesting the way he he goes about it he he says that language as it evolved basically replaced grooming when when the groups of individuals got so large grooming you know you would have to spend so much time grooming each other to maintain the social structures to maintain the the connections between individuals that it would be unfeasible but with speech with language you can talk at like up to three individuals at once there's been studies that have been done that once there's more than those three people talking uh you know one speaker and three people when there's more than that the group breaks up or there's smaller conversations that happen i recommend i strongly recommend the book it's really interesting and if you want to pl- if you want to read it while playing ancestors it's a trip it's it's really great um but yeah i i just i like that they in- Included grooming in the game but I feel like they should have had more of a there should have been more of a bonus to doing it like you know maybe because like chimps not only groom they, you, you wouldn't necessarily only groom your partner you don't just groom a person you want to mate with you also groom your like other males that you want to help you maintain like order like if you're if you're a high-ranking male and you you know are in a position in the hierarchy where you have power you will try to groom other males to basically strengthen those bonds and strengthen your position in the hierarchy you um chimps form coalitions that's something that i learned from uh chimpanzee politics by franz deval uh again another amazing book that i recommend if you're playing through ancestors and you want to read a little bit more about primatology um yeah chimps create these coalitions where you know one male might not be strong enough to take over as the alpha as the leader Uh, of the troop but uh, you know he'll like go to like 
the with the females or he'll go to like another male that's the strong and like they'll band together and that way they'll take over and they'll they'll you know maintain their their power in this in this in the social structure through coalitions and all of that is done through grooming and through favors and it would have been nice to see more of that it would have been nice for example to see grooming bonding a group together after a fight or like if you fight a predator and everybody gets scared you groom them and they they don't become afraid anymore and over time if you groom them enough they like trust you so they would like do things for you that normally a hominin wouldn't do necessarily like they wouldn't they, they wouldn't they would just run away but in this case they uh they stand up for you they fight for you that would have been interesting to see if if they added that in the game i think that would have been pretty pretty cool but uh yeah uh language replaced grooming it was uh, a more expedient it was a more efficient form of interacting with each other and uh, that led to a rise in group numbers so when you get to homo erectus you know we still have some debate whether homo erectus had language or not to the extent that like say neanderthals had language just because the bones that we have um, gathered from Homo erectus, we haven't seen the hyoid, doesn't necessarily seem like they could produce the sounds that more modern humans could produce. However, that doesn't mean that they didn't communicate verbally through a more simple you know language uh, so that's something that I that's something that I think you know will probably be studied further on in the future when we can have better technologies uh, we'll probably find out that Homo erectus had a pretty complex language system uh, it's hard to tell, you know, it's hard to tell with humans, with, with, with hominins 10 million years ago in Africa, it's hard to tell how much of a language they had, other than by comparing them to chimpanzees and, you know, their related uh, gorillas and uh, sometimes there's been studies with baboons as well that have been really good. So yeah, right now what I'm doing is I'm looking at the outsiders. I'm trying to collect the outsiders to bring them into my troop. Uh, this is the way that you get new females in the group. It's the way that you get uh, basically new members to come to your to your clan, to your to your party. Uh, and they usually need something. They usually need either food or they're hurt or they're thirsty so you need to bring a very specific thing but if you bring a coconut you usually they usually need a coconut they usually need either water from a coconut or they need you know food from a coconut that cures them so coconuts are pretty pretty good in this game which which is great because i love coconuts So yeah, going back to fission fusion, um, this is very, very typical chimpanzee behavior. Um, you know, chimps would, they, they migrate and as they're migrating, they'll separate from the group. Like males will join up with another troop or different males will separate and create a hunting party and go hunting for colobus monkeys 
So that's a way to, you know, gain new followers. Is uh, that, that's pretty accurate in the game, you know. Oh, here comes the Battle Eagle. So I had to jump. Yeah. Also, if you're jumping through the trees and you press A, you will hang on to foliage. That's something that wasn't told in the game. And I think they do have a hint for it at the beginning, but the hints are very, very like quick. They're very sparse. So if you, if you press A, you can hang on to foliage and then keep swinging and go to another tree. So right now I'm bleeding because the Battler Eagle clawed me. So I have to find, uh, I have a, as you can see on the ring on the bottom, it shows my neuronal energy that I've gathered. It shows that I have a baby chimp on me. Is the yellow dot with a arrow with a with a strip on it? And then it shows a white dot with a with a line on it, and that's the new follower that I have found that is following me back to camp. As you can see, I'm bleeding profusely, so I have to find some capoc fiber to. Uh, to help me with my wounds um, yeah again that's that's another one of those um, liberties that the game creators took it's really hard to know chimpanzees have a knowledge of medicine there's actually an article that I read a while back that is really cool chimps will eat specific plants and specific things to cure themselves from parasites and they will eat specific like things in specific seasons like months to prevent like diseases and parasites and things like that uh, when it comes to like a bleeding wound and how they would treat that with capoc fiber or with mud you know that's I don't know enough about it. If someone out there can comment, leave a comment and uh, let me know if, if that's something that is known that chimps do because I haven't heard of it. But again, it's, it's, it stands to reason that, that you know, they, would, they would do something about the bleeding. So, so that's pretty cool that they included it in the game. And... Uh, so now I'm healing myself there. The music in this game is amazing. I mean, the 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 sounds and the music is just really really well crafted. I mean, it's it's such an experience. It's it's such a a trip just to like move around the trees and is mellow out. Listen to the to the soothing music of what was it Moba Kelly? Moka I forget. Moba Koba. The the musician on it. It's uh, credited in the beginning but uh, yeah it's really cool stuff. So yeah, now I'm basically heading back. I had a stick, but I didn't use it on the Battler Eagle. I freaked out <laughs> when it attacked me, so I did not was not able to do the 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 quick scene for for fighting the eagle. But once I once I come back to my troop and I end the expedition that will join that will bring the outsider that I found into my troop oh cool it's a female that's awesome 
So this is something new that I found out recently. But um, the game is actually pretty accurate with the amount of babies that you can create with each female. Each female can only have two offspring, two babies. And in the wild, chimpanzees uh, only have about three children in their lifetime and twins are very rare. Um, the mothers give birth uh, once every five or six years and they, they keep the babies for a long time. Baby chimpanzees are not weaned until they're about five years old. So they're still drinking milk from the mother. So because of that, you know, it's not a very like quick turnaround. So that's something that's actually pretty accurate in the game that I thought must have been wrong. Cause like, how can they only have two babies? But that's actually, it's, it's spot on. It's actually pretty accurate. So that's pretty awesome. So yeah, I think uh, I think I'll leave it at that. It's uh, it's been a great experience for me. Um, make sure to like and subscribe if you like this kind of content. Um, as we get further on into the game, I'll talk more about different evolutionary theories and uh, you know research that has come out recently. But yeah, like I said, thank you so much for listening and thanks for watching and I hope you liked the video.